thanks everybody for being here today. If uh, Ms. Lake would like to call the Mayor Williams call. here, Council President Lake here, Mr. Swartz present, Mr. Shepard here, Mr. Vondahar here, Ms. Longenecker present, Ms. Snyder here. We're all here. Yay, we have a quorum and we're all here. Wonderful. Thank you, everyone. Um, next on our agenda are the um, minutes from the previous meeting. Those were emailed to you. Uh, does anyone have any changes or corrections to those? If not, a motion to approve the minutes. Move. Mr. Shepard. Second. Second. Longnecker. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. All right. Thank you very much. I will now turn this over to Anna Mary, who's going to run us through where we are financially with the city of Norwood. Uh, in front of you is a statement of cash position at uh, 1231 2018. Uh, it is front and back uh, this time. Uh, point out two funds. The general fund ended unexpended balances of $1.9 million uh, before encumbrances. There are a couple of attributing factors to this. Um, there are several one-time monies that you won't see coming in in 2019. Uh, there was a SAFER grant of 438000 that will not be received in 2019 or going forward. Building permits were extremely up. This is the highest uh, they've seen it in probably over five years. It was up $360,000 from 2017. Uh, income tax uh, had a large bump at the end of the year due to uh, bonuses that were paid out by a company and then you earn income tax off of that. Uh, that was a large amount of money. Um, and then there were some, uh, one department that had uh, low expenditures with uh, that being the police than that was expected. So going into um, 2019, we need to keep in mind that we will not see some of these revenue uh, that we saw in 2018 uh, when we we're working on the uh, recovery plan. And then the other fund that I want to point out is the water fund, which is at the bottom of page one. It is in the negative of $147,000. Uh, our office has actually uh, worked with the uh, city auditor's office and doing some preliminary analytics on that. We are actually going to be working with the utilities department here at the city as well and diving more in depth into um, things there to figure out uh, why that one is negative and uh, how that can be um, fixed going forward. Uh, and that is also something if, uh, we, depending on that, the general fund could potentially have to pay money into that depending on what we find in our analysis of the water and sewer and all the utilities. So any questions over where they ended up for 2018? you uh, make a comment that um, the city of Cincinnati did uh, raise our rates 3% um, and um, by ordinance the safety service director is in charge of setting the rates and so um, because of that negative balance and because of the need to purchase a backhoe and because of a lot of other things um, he, it was his recommendation and that the water rates would be increased by 5% this year to try to offset some of that negative amount in that fund. Um, as for 2019, um, I don't have uh, analysis of uh, month to date and stuff. The recovery plan is being worked on with the city and with our office. That has to be updated every year, which is due in March. Uh, so uh, they, they have set their appropriations for 2019 based upon the recovery plan that is in place at this time uh, with the recovery plan items also within uh, the appropriations as well. Uh, so that's what the city is using as a budget at this time until the recovery plan has been updated per the revised code that's required. Uh, status of the recovery plan, uh, that's being worked on. There's been multiple talks, I think, at council meetings about different things, the capital improvement plan that they've actually been working on and some other items. And then the city is also uh, in uh, union negotiations as well. Um, for this year and uh, we'll see where that lands and there will be more talks about that later on. 
The other report that I have is the uh, report on accounting methods. Uh, that was uh, sent out, I think we released it in on October. No, December. December. Okay, December. Uh, this is a required report for our office when the um, entity is in fiscal emergency. Uh, basically, it's we're looking at the uh, accounting system. Uh, we're looking at like 12 different sections throughout the city. Uh, this is the thing that we've been talking about where I've had many department meetings and we went and we had uh, sit down conversations with every department and department head, uh, those who do the work and, and figuring out what they do from uh, A to B to C to Z and then uh, putting this report together and then some uh, comments from our office on areas that uh, we feel need to be worked on. So as you go through this, you'll see that there are 12 sections and they're listed on page one. So we go from budgetary all the way through minutes to uh, cash disbursements and revenues. Uh, page six, we kind of go over the um, governance or overview of the city plus the commission as well. And then um, how uh, the commission came into existence and then um, some of the powers and duties. So the very first section is budgetary, which starts on page eight. And I'll kind of go over a quick overview, kind of like I did with the department. So each section you'll see at the top, then you'll have a brief description of what an effective system for that topic is. And it's very brief as you can see, it's one paragraph, give us an idea how it should be run. Then you have the statutory requirements, which is the higher revised code. And then you also have the higher administrative code requirements. The next part that you'll have under each section is the methods used by the city. And this is where we went and we had the discussions and we looked at what they actually did and, and what the processes were. That took a long time. And then looking at what they had. And then the last piece of that for each section then is if we had comments from our office. Okay. And I don't know if you guys have read through this or not. Um, so I'll briefly go over just the comments unless you have other questions. So on page 10. Uh, are the budgetary comments. Uh, one being that um, not to appropriate money unless you have a unencumbered balance and estimated re revenues that will cover those appropriations, the budgeted expenses. The next one is to um, uh, this accounting system needs to match what the estimated resources and an annual appropriations are. Uh, another comment we had was uh, 570510, which is basically if you have negative funds, then you've used other monies to pay for that fund's required expenses, is basically what that comes down to. Any questions on those? Okay. The next section were no comments, <coughs> chart of accounts. Uh, the next section is accounting journal and ledgers. On page 13, there was one comment about an actual written disaster recovery plan. There are things in place that they know to do, but we want something formally in writing that goes through the process and procedures. The next section is a pretty decently long one, is revenues. Uh, as you can tell, we went through and documented each different department that uh, would uh, get monies. And you'll see that go all the way through page 20, I believe. And then we had comments on page 20. Uh, one of them is depositing monies timely. Uh, if you don't have a uh, policy that states differently, you have to do that within 24 hours, whether it's to the treasurer's office or, in, or to the bank. Um, another one is safeguarding monies. Uh, some, some areas were uh, storing it in an unlocked or unsafe, un, unlocked safe or unlocked drawers. Um, we have comment about pans. Uh, those sometimes were being done weekly or monthly instead of when the, um, as the monies were coming in. What are uh, pay-ins, sorry? Pay-ins are uh, how the information gets to the auditor's office to say this is the t type of money that came in and this is where it needs to be posted within the system. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Uh, a need for cross-training of job responsibilities uh, in the auditor's office and the treasurer's office. Um, was there any issues with like segregation of duties? Uh, we'll get to that in okay. payroll. Okay. Uh, mostly no. Okay. Uh, it just more of uh, if this person's out, this person can handle this or things like that. Okay. Um, 
we're really big when we do these are about policies and procedures and then this one we ask for a policy uh, about meter readings with the utilities and then how many times it can be read and, and estimated and so forth and then also about who approves adjustments and then another one about earnings tax and getting things uh, deposited and, and uh, not sitting around in general what is the plan to assess these um don't know what you'd call them findings I guess going forward I'll, I'll get to that at okay. the end, but that's a great question uh, purchasing process page 25 uh, there's a findings for every databases <clears throat> on our website vendors need to be checked to make sure they have no uh, or, uh, finding for recovery before they do business with them um, again there's a couple of different things in here about policies and procedures. We have that here about the purchasing and formal bidding. Uh, then and now, when you have a purchase that is made without a purchase order and it's over $3,000, that is required to come to council for approval. It cannot just be approved by the uh, city auditor's office. Um, and then I'll skip to the bottom one. And then making sure with the, uh, if you do blanket purchase orders, it's required that you set a uh, amount by council, a maximum of what the city auditor's office can uh, issue a blanket purchase order for. And then with our vendors, making sure we have all their information before they are paid with a W-9 and so forth. Where did the uh, $3,000 amount come from? Hi, Vice Code. It's 3000 for everybody but accounting. Regardless of the size of the organization? Okay. Uh, the next session, section is cash disbursements on page 28 uh, are your comments here. Um, a reviewing of the checks after they're printed to me, uh, up against the invoices and such. Uh, again, documenting procedures, having policies. Uh, we're asking that invoices be mailed to the city auditor's office and this then dispersed out to the departments for approval and come back. Uh, that's more of uh, so we know when invoices are coming in or not. And then getting invoices more timely paid uh, and avoiding uh, significant penalties and interest. Are they utilizing like a three-way match? Uh, so this is something they're going to be working on so this is in process okay. one of the other things is we can talk about that or not, somebody can with their capital improvement plan one of the things that's needed here is a new accounting system and potentially maybe that could be done um, electronically uh, instead of all the paper uh, that's part of uh, I think issues at times that things get it's sure. harder when you have paper yeah, and I get if it. you yeah. have it where it goes here there and there yeah. within a lot of the newer software so is there, as a former former department head, I'm just wondering, is there a reason why you want all invoices mailed to the auditor's office as opposed to the originating department? Because we used to get them and then say, okay to pay. It, you still have to get it to say, okay to pay. But if it's coming in there, then they know what invoices have come in and they can track that as well. And then a lot of, when we had the department meeting, because we went over this uh, draft report before it was released with the departments, and we talked about this, and a lot of them were okay if we, if the city would scan them because you guys have the newer printers now that have the email scan ca capabilities and send them over that way and then get the approval back okay. so but the big thing is is so there's a lot of questions at times because i'm here too that well, did that invoice come in i've never seen that invoice if we get it to where it comes into one department and they're seeing it then they know that okay they have it i haven't had it back for approval or I don't know. You'll have to go talk to this department, and I don't know where that stands. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Payroll processing. See, if you guys want to know anything about your city and the processes, we, we were very detailed <laughs> about what the, they do in these sections. Yeah, the payroll section is very, very detailed. Uh, page 33, we have two comments, and this goes to what you would ask, Mr. Vandahar. Um, the employee who processes it and has access and, and does everything, she does the rate adjustments and we're looking that that be somebody else uh, that's not doing the processing or it be checked as well. Mm -hmm. That was one of the things we saw. Did yeah. you have any findings related to that as far as specific no. instances? Just of the control thing. Okay. Uh, and then several negotiated contracts are expired as we well know. And those are documented in part of the uh, methods of the city. 
debt. We didn't really have anything, but you can see the debt that was related at that time we released the report. Capital assets and supplies and inventory. Uh, we do have some comments on page 38. You can read through them, but mainly the biggest thing here is policies and procedures for different things and an annual review of the assets to know what we do and don't have. Like an inventory? Yes. What about, um, it looks like we use a spreadsheet to track uh, fixed assets. We use a spreadsheet for the infrastructure. What do we use for everything else? It's been a while. That's a Marcus. It's yeah, it's an egov. There's SSI software system. That's a system. fixed asset software? Yes. Okay. Infrastructure is a little different. Why? It's <laughs> That's a beast. Because you have to have all your roads in there, and things can be depreciated differently, and you have sections and segments of the roads, and then you have the base layer, you have the uh, bottom layer. Like, there's three different layers, and you have to do each one of those differently. And I work with several different cities and counties and others that have to deal with their infrastructure. So the street portion itself is very complex, and most of the systems that are out there aren't capable of tracking all those different sections of the road. Okay. So it's not uncommon, though? It's not uncommon. Okay. Is that because there's just so much there? Yes. Any issues with the spreadsheet having, I noticed, talked about uh, the useful life should be listed. And any, I know spreadsheets are prone to formula errors and miscalculation, things like that. Right. They can be, yes. So that's something that we, you have to watch. That is actually audited every year as well as part of their gap. Okay. Good. So. Okay. If those were issues, those should come up, unless it's an auditor risk if it just didn't show up in their testing. Yeah, yeah, and then the new accounting system that they're looking at has a module too for the okay. other What are they looking at? Uh, it's an updated version of SSI, if I remember, software solutions. They have come in and, and, and done estimates and talked about the, t the modules under there. And that's what we're currently using? Correct, and it's a very old version. It's not an up-to-date. They are not up-to-date of the current version of that. It's probably right. nine, ten years old. Ninety-five. Yeah, okay, even older. Ninety-five. Okay. Is it good? Software solutions. I have several cities that use that at the newer, um, whatever. Newer version? Yeah, thank you. The yeah. newer version. But so. it's as a software system, it's good and we like mm -hmm. it? Yes. Okay. You can go out on their uh, website, actually, and they have several different entities listed that actually use that. Okay, wait. Oh, okay, sorry. I went too bad. Then on page 41, we have the cash management side of it. Yeah. Uh, here we want a policy updated on their investments. They have one, but it, it, it's a 1996, and now we're getting interest and, and other things, so that needs to be updated. Um, another thing about procedures, uh, reconciling items as part of that and identifying the items necessary, that's being worked on and has been being worked on. We're trying to figure out what that unknown variance is. And then uh, the, he's not really the assistant, but, uh, the city auditor, a city treasurer reviewing and signing that monthly bank reconciliation because his staff is the one who actually performs that. So to show that he reviewed it. He does, but he needs to prove he does. He does review it monthly? He just doesn't sign and date it? Right. And as you know, as auditor type minds, we like to see the proof that it's being done. Um, exactly. Well, it says should review, which means there's He's no reviewed. review. Right, but he is reviewing. So Should that be changed? No. That's part of what our comment is. Make oh, you're review saying you should and, do this, but and he is sure doing that. that. He's just not signing and dating it. Correct. Okay. Financial reporting. Is there a certain amount of time that we recommend that that should be reviewed within or that the reconciliation should be done within? Uh, normally it's done within 15 days, and with the amount of uh, bank accounts that they have, that's, it's, that's pretty normal uh, from our other. They do do things. Uh, electronically and some of them they have to wait for so 15 days is good uh, uh, we didn't really talk about that but uh, uh, one of the things I think back here we talk about it coming to council uh, and being seen there too uh, probably being reviewed and stuff before it would come to council which would probably put it inside a month yes okay okay the financial reporting we had two comments here 
right here is where the copy of the monthly bank reconciliation and the support comes in uh, is looked at by council at meetings and then uh, me the minutes should state uh, the financial reports that are provided to council we know what is provided that's kept on record but that really needs to be uh, put within the minutes of what they're looking at and if it's at the finance committee it should be there it's talked about there does the council normally or at a certain frequency see the monthly bank racks at all no no i don't okay okay record uh, recording of official proceedings which is really the minutes we didn't really have a comment there and i believe that takes you through the um entire report so can we talk with Brad? I think we're getting to is like so it's a great job identifying the gaps, but yes. then like how do we fill them? Okay, so the other part of this, because you're in, they're in fiscal emergency, is uh, the only way for them to come out they have to become positive. They can't meet any of the uh, fiscal emergency um, conditions. They have to show they're going to be positive going out within their forecast recovery plan, and then they have to correct the comments that are in this as well. So this has to be addressed as we go along. I know that they are working on some of these already. Um, and then uh, we will be reporting back to you on where they stand on these comments uh, at the commission meetings and, and updating you what's being in progress, what has been fixed, or what hasn't been started yet. So that'll come when we start <coughs> bringing this to the commission. So who's responsible? Like, so you guys oversight, they have the oversight and, and someone within the city is So there's different people that will have to, different, it's not all one person. Right. So yeah. it'll be a, a combination of several. So our job is to make sure we're monitoring that and look and see where they stand. And then they need to get these really fixed before uh, we can even talk about coming out if they're in good financial standing. Mm -hmm. We have like a timeline we're working towards, guys. It seems like a lot of it is written, <coughs> like written policies and procedures where um, there's probably a method, but it's not put in. I writing. know some are, they've already started some, and there's some drafts out there. And then it, really what we like to do is, is they start doing that, and then we'll look at them before they go to be approved so that if we see that there should be, okay, well, you're missing this piece, or you really should have this piece, then we're going to look at that and give them that mm -hmm. feedback so that we make sure when it goes, it's not going to come back five times, and, well, this piece was left out, and that piece was left out. So mm -hmm. uh, that's part of what our role will be in that. Mm -hmm. And as part of that, there'll be review of of these items. Like, say, for example, you'll grab a bank rack and you'll see that it's been signed off on, Correct. and then it's been reviewed. And Correct. and then, uh, how do you assess the priority of what gets done first versus what's you know what's most important? Obviously, things like disaster recovery plans are important, mm -hmm. but they're not always they're kind of rainy day items sometimes. So, how do you deem what is most important and most significant and most urgent? versus something that's less significant, less urgent. I don't know if I really do that. The policies and procedures and disaster recovery plan is part of that. They take longer because you have to look at several different pieces, and some of them are bigger than you think once you get into them, especially procedures, which is more for them to have an outline of how things should work, especially if somebody would leave the office and then somebody has to pick it up. Um, and then so that all departments are doing the same thing across the board. Uh, so those are going to take time. I'm not, I did, I, we've never sat down and really prioritized anything. We just want to see a good faith effort in, in moving forward. And then if, you know, some of these things can be knocked off pretty quickly. Uh, and then we're sure. going to look to see that. If, and, and if some of those that we think can be done, like, not to pick on the treasurer's office, but the monthly, the reconciliation and that getting signed off by the city treasurer, that's something that can happen fairly quickly. And we should start seeing that pretty soon. Some of the other ones, you know, so I, I don't really, I guess, prioritize them as you're saying, but we're going to make sure that we're still working towards getting these done. And then as far as, again, kind of proving that it's in place, I know a lot of times you'll have to show a certain amount of period of following these procedures. I mean, it's one thing to write them, but then to implement them, make them, you know, part of a daily routine or a weekly, monthly routine. How long does that vesting period uh, need to like the treasurer's thing we'll check it every month we will continuously check to make sure that they are you know implementing following the recommendations uh, until the time of release and even post release don't you still monitor only um, if okay. they don't have all the comments cleared by the time that they are released okay 
And, and I want to clarify when I, you said this, this council get statements. Um, we don't get them formally sent to us on council, but um, the auditor's office will send you uh, will send us um, the end of month reconciliation on all their reports. For anyone who wants them, I get them every month. I know I get them, um, but it's not something that is formally on council. But their office does make available to us all of those financial records to anybody who wants them um, on council. Like on I council, said, but I know not I get. outside, not outside of council. Yeah, it's just they. She send them through email. You know, if yeah. you want, if you want these financial reports every month, let me know. And yes, I'd like them. And then right. every month, with like clockwork, she does send them. Yeah. But I don't know if that was be. part of public record or how that. What, what the law says as far as yeah, providing know. that to council. Is that or something you want us to review on day. council every yeah. month when those come out? Either in finance or, or in I know like the finance council. committee does. Yes. But that's, there's not like formal written minutes of committee meetings. So there's, f there's reports that come out of them, but they're not the detailed minutes that we get from council. So. And we can talk about that further. Okay. I just wanted to clarify. I, I, didn't, I didn't want anybody to think that we didn't know what was going on. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it, and I and I respect the fact that you're you're requesting it, but I think if if certain council members have asked for that and see that, and others don't, I think that puts a certain imbalance in financial knowledge, maybe on the members on the council. So maybe that should they be something all, that everybody. Do they all get it? They all get it. Do they all get it? Yes. Okay. This is not in the minutes or talked about there. So uh, we're wanting something that shows what they get, what they're required, and then where it's discussed, whether it's in finance and talked about it, the, that council itself, uh, and what they looked at and stuff. So yeah. they all get it. It goes through. Okay. Email. Well, I just we think, that, yeah, I think that, that should be documented in some yes. respect in the minutes or that everybody has seen it, everybody has yeah, acknowledged it, it's brought up for discussion, and then. We have nothing to talk about or yeah. yeah i have a point or you know i'll leave that to you guys but i think that might be a good idea to just and in the midst of keep everybody in the standing know. rules so if you want me to add that in as a as like a an item on the agenda we can do that just make that a monthly thing on the agenda any other questions on this report as far as presenting to the to this council going forward, as far as the progress, the status, the timeline, what have you, how is that going to be presented? Is it going to be written? Um, I think it might help to have some documentation. Um, we usually keep a binder. So I will have a binder and I'll have every section in it. So anytime that we are getting documentation that they're working on it or they've cleared it and, and they continue to, when I say cleared, they they met the requirement of the comment to clear it, then we're going to have that in a binder. And so I don't know if we're going to have a binder for all of them yet or if we'll just discuss what we've seen. Normally we we'll just discuss. We'll have the binder available, but we're not going to make copies of all that. So that's no, all I meant like a maybe a one-page summary. Okay of we'll here's what we've done here's what we're working on here's what's to be done Usually maybe by what area we do for the commission is we just make a list of how many comments there are in each section and then have another column that says cleared so that you can say okay there were four comments and budgetary two of them are cleared and have a running total that way okay and by cleared you mean they, what? they when they. we say cleared that means that they have done whatever they needed to do to address that comment Okay. For the ones that are for the ones that are ongoing, uh, like the one we referred to before, the bank wrecks, it's cleared, but it's not cleared in perpetuity necessarily. It's an ongoing clearance, right? Well, once it's you said clear, you're going to look at that. All we will do is monitor it. We're not going to change the status of it until they would change and, and, and quit doing it. And then we would update you as right if that were to keep monitoring. Yes. Yeah, so it'll be kind of cleared but monitoring kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, Okay. for every one of them. Got it. Because, so I mean, you know, I know how things, it's, you guys are here, you guys are monitoring, things get done, and then uh, what's the way that when the cat's away, the mice will play kind of thing, and, and maybe they fall out of habits later on that, that you guys um, thought were good recommendations, and, and then there, I guess with, that's a five-year issue, I suppose, maybe. Yeah, we'll continue monitoring them until. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying happens, it's going to happen. I'm then, saying yeah, sometimes so. it's like, well, I don't agree with. I think this is stupid and it's a waste of time, so I'm going to stop doing it. And then we would address and then that and over say, time, yeah. you know. Okay. Yeah, got it. Thank you. Good. 
I think when a community comes out of a uh, fiscal emergency situation, this is such an important report to have accomplished and really have it in the community's muscle memory if this is how we're doing the business now. It, it gives a comfort, I think, too. Can I make a comment on Mr. Schwartz's uh, remark? What Mr. Schwartz said is exactly right. It is ex exactly what happened the last time. Yeah. You know, we come out with all these plans and then they just disappear. They just quit. They don't do it anymore. An example was the tagging of assets. We used to assets. do that all the time. Every we used to do that all the time. I've still got off stuff in my office that's been tagged. They don't do it anymore. And and so it's vitally important that that this this commission, while it's in effect, stay on top of it and we try to ensure in the future that we don't fall back into the same problems that got us here. And this city has a history of doing exactly that. So what you said, uh, you hit the nail right on the head, and it's perfect. And, and the more that we, we emphasize that, the better off we're going to be, because the people here now working on it, you know, they, they may say, okay, I remember that. Like I said earlier, Don and I remember the old fiscal emergency. And some of these people will be gone, or for whatever reason, it fades away. And I guarantee you, we'll be right back here again if we don't strengthen it. So what you said, I appreciate. Thank you. Good. Okay, well, thank you for walking us through that very yeah, much. Well done. Yeah, it's a very well done report. Um, the next item on our agenda are a couple updates. Uh, one, uh, Mr. Vonderhaar had inquired about the um, article that had been in the paper toward the end of December regarding the fire service and um, that has subsided. There was an inquiry made, um, someone from the city. It was not authorized on behalf of the mayor um, or the administration, but uh, at this point there isn't any more story there. Okay. The, it's just, just where it is. Um, the second piece we have is uh, labor contracts, and this is an opportunity for us to hear as a commission where, where they stand. And I'd like to invite Kelly Babcock from um, Clemens, Nelson & Associates, who's going to give us an update on this. This is to give us as a commission an overview of where these stand, next steps, kind of an estimated timeline. Um, as this is going to come into play with our revised financial recovery plan. But this is an update on process only. I want to be clear on that, that we're not going to talk in terms of contracts. That's not our job, and we're not to do that. And um, she's not going to be able to reveal any information at all. So I just want to kind of give some parameters to that. But nevertheless, we welcome you, Kelly, and um, want to learn more about where this, where this stands right now from Norwood. Thank you all um, for inviting me here. I've heard through the mayor's office that, that you have had some questions, uh, rightfully you so. You are not going to be heard in the <laughs> <on a laughs> microphone. <laughs> here. Do you want my, take my seat. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, so right here. So it's okay if I sit? Yep. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. I need to turn your mic. Can you move up? You won't be heard <laughs> unless, you, unless you're on a microphone. <clears throat> So I appreciate you all inviting me here today and um, asking us to come talk with you. Um, I think it's a good opportunity to um, let you know what, what we're doing in the city uh, from a very high level uh, overview. Um, as Ms. Snyder stated, um, Ohio Revised Code 4117 is going to prevent us from discussing specifics about the negotiations and proposals and um, what's going on in in the actual bargaining, um, but I think it's important for you all to know that, you know, as an overview, um, we've been instructed by city administration through the mayor, mayor's office, to follow the plan, um, and so we have um, been trying to follow the plan um, in dealing with these issues. Um, as part of an overview, I I want to kind of go over some definitions with you. Um, I'm, I'm sure you've heard terms like grievances, arbitration, fact-finding, conciliation, um, ULPs, SERBs. <laughs> so let me just give you a little, little bit of definition if you'll give me a, a second to do that. Um, 
these are all terms that are very common in Ohio public sector collective bargaining law. Um, they're referenced mainly in Chapter 4117 of the Revised Code. Um, they deal with uh, union negotiations and collective bargaining. Not so common maybe just to the uh, um, a, a lay person, outside business person, but a grievance is an allegation by the union or an employee that the city has violated the terms of a current contract. Um, the grievance can be heard, it's usually in writing, and it's heard by the department head up through the mayor's office, and if it's not resolved through discussions um, internally, the union has the right to take that grievance to arbitration. And arbitration is binding. So uh, arbitration is controlled by Revised Code 2711. Um, the arbitrator is usually appointed from uh, AAA, American uh, Arbitration Association, or FMCS, which is the Federal Mediation and Conciliation Service. So if you hear grievances and arbitrations, those are issues that involve um, violations of current contracts. So we've got a written contract, and the union or the employees are claiming that, that the city has violated that. We currently have 12 grievances pending in the city. Um, three of them relate to health insurance. Um, one um, from the police department relating to um, a wage increase for 2019. Two from the AFSCME, two AFSCME units relating to wage increases that they think they should be entitled to um, from a, a related decision from police that we got from arbitration last year. One from the fire department um, related to the fire inquiry that was just discussed. And then the remainder of all the grievances relate from the police and fire to staffing issues. Um, either their overall complement or promotions of some sort. So of those 12 pending grievances, um, we did have, uh, in addition to that, we had one that went to arbitration last year. And um, you maybe have heard or were informed of an arbitration award that was um, where an arbitrator from New York <laughs> came in and decided that the city violated a, a collective bargaining agreement for police and awarded some uh, wage increases, even though um, those wage increases were not included in the plan. So we're still, um, an arbitration decision is binding, but there is an appeal process, a uh, very limited appeal process through Ohio Revised Code 2711. And uh, that decision has not been made yet, whether that will be appealed. So we do have another grievance slash unfair labor practice, which I'll we'll talk about in a second, that, uh, slash court case that has just been deferred to arbitration by the court. So we will be uh, forced into another arbitration with the police department on um, another issue related to uh, complement motions and such. <coughs> then, uh, any questions on grievances? Okay. Then we have, uh, well, here's talk about ULPs, unfair labor practices. And those are charges that are filed with the State Employment Relations Board. And those can be filed, the employer or the union can file an unfair labor practice. But in this case, um, the union, we have five pending unfair labor practice charges. And an unfair labor practice charge is an allegation by the union that the city has interfered with the union's rights to um, represent their, their union employees. Typically, they're, they're alleging that we've interfered with the right to bargain collectively with us over a specific issue, um, or that we've made a unilateral change and, um, outside of our obligation to bargain. Negotiation 4117 makes it um, mandatory for a public employer to bargain with a public sector union over all wages, hours, and terms and conditions of employment. So if um, the union claims that we have made a change or that we've refused to bargain a change, they can file an unfair labor practice and say that we've violated our, our obligation to bargain with them or that we've somehow bargained in bad faith, um, et cetera. 
So those five pending ULPs um, overlap somewhat with the grievances. We've got um, two of them on the health insurance, and one of those ULPs was filed jointly by both AFSCME units. So technically we have three units have filed an unfair labor practice over health insurance. Um, we have two ULPs, uh, one from police and one from fire on staffing issues and complement issues, which again overlap with the grievances that were filed. And then the final one um, from the fire department on the, like the, the inquiry that was made um, that we discussed before. And in addition to those, a couple of those, they overlap ULPs overlap with grievances. We also have a couple common police court cases that have been filed, one that the city filed and one that um, the police union filed that again overlap <laughs> similar issues related to staffing and complement um, and promotions and, and stuff. So then we have negotiations. So our obligation um, as a public employer with the exclusive representatives, which in this case we have four separate unions, so our obligation is to each union separately to bargain um, over wages, hours, terms, and conditions of employment. If, um, and our, our position without getting in any details whatsoever about we have met with all four unions, um, our, our position, as instructed by administration, the mayor, is to follow the plan. Um, and you know, we've got the plan that's in place now, and unfortunately our, the, the timing with all this is that the four contracts have expired under the old plan, and then we've got a new plan coming. Um, so we're, <laughs> we're all trying to play, you know, work, uh, you know, under, under the terms that we have available to us now, and right now what we have available is the old is the plan. Um, but if, the, if there's no agreement between the city and any of the four, or all four of the bargaining units, um, either party can request fact-finding. So the next step is if, if we can't agree on all issues in the contract, We'll have a, another neutral party will be um, selected through CERB, State Employment Relations Board, which is the administrative body that oversees collective bargaining uh, in public sector in Ohio. Uh, we'll get a, a, a neutral from a panel up there to come hear a case um, on all the open issues where the city will present their side and the union will present their side. And then this fact finder will make a recommendation um, is that the, binding? At this level, it's not binding. Okay. At the fact-finding level, and again, all four units have the ability to go to four separate fact-finding hearings. Um, that recommendation, either party, either the union or the, the city through council, can reject or accept the fact finders award, but they have to do it in total. We can't. Uh, the city can't accept. Fact Finder's Award on insurance and reject it on wages. You have to accept or reject the entire award. You have to do it within seven days of the award being issued. <coughs> if either party rejects the award at Fact Finding because it is just a recommendation, then the parties um, are obligated to meet one more time and try to discuss you know, if there's any, any way to get an agreement based on the recommendation. And if there is no agreement reached after fact-finding and after rejection for uh, units that are permitted to strike, which would be the two AFSCME units, then the city can make its last best offer. And at that point, either implement its last best offer unilaterally or the employees have, the, the AFSCME members have the right to strike. So from a timeline perspective, um, what we'd be looking at in, in that type of unit, those two units, is as soon as we, either, either side recognizes that we're at impasse, and we're not going to get an agreement voluntarily uh, between the parties, that starts the, the timeline for fact-finding for that group. Um, there is a statutory timeline, but it is very unrealistic to me. It's, you know, you get, a, you get a panel in seven days, you hold a hearing within 14, uh, the fact finder has seven days to get you an award. It, in today's reality, and especially the number of issues that we have pending here, 
we can't get a fact finder who's got a day on his calendar <laughs> in the time limits. So it has been taking um, normally 30 to 60 days to schedule a fact finder hearing once we get the person appointed. And then they ask for 30 days to get an award back. We can, you know, if we are in, um, so inclined, either party can ask for that to be expedited and they try to follow the statutory procedure if, if it's um, necessary, it's available. But in reality, and historically, what it's taking right now is probably three months or so to get through a fact finding, but it, it could be shorter. So that's where, where they asked me two units would stop. Um, the other two units, because they're safety service force, safety forces, they are not permitted to strike in Ohio, for obvious reasons. Um, so the uh, statutory process for our non-strike units, so we go to another hearing. If we can't, if one party rejects the fact-finding report, and then we can't come to an agreement following fact-finding, we go to another hearing, and this hearing is called a conciliation, and this one finding. So the parties go into conciliation, um, and whereas at the fact-finding level recommendation, the parties can submit their, their positions, the fact-finder can come up with compromises and uh, meet in the middle, have to make suggestions. The conciliator can't do that. The conciliator is bound to accept one position or the other. So the intent is to get the parties to have pretty realistic proposals, because if you lose, you, they win. <laughs> yeah. So this question, so you're going through the, the initial fact finding? So they're here, we're here, whatever. Can you revise, they, let's say maybe meets in the middle, but they're still not happy, can you present that revised plan to the next level, or is it whatever you started out with? And actually, that's very common. Okay. That after we go through the fact finding, one party or the other may, where I said we have to adopt the or reject the report as a whole, often the fact finder's recommendation becomes one party's position or the other at conciliation. It's not required, you don't have to, but you can. And in some cases you settle a few issues in between the two, mm -hmm. um, that could happen. So where we are, in some, you know, another hearing, a conciliation hearing, which is binding, it takes, um, same amount of time, we, we get a conciliator appointed, get a hearing scheduled, the report back, at that point it's binding. Those usually do have, there are fewer conciliation hearings in Ohio, but there are fewer people that are qualified and eligible to, to serve as a conciliator in Ohio. They have to meet certain requirements of the State Employment Re Relations Board. Um, they have to reside in Ohio, they have to um, have done <coughs> a certain number of fact-finding hearings before they can be eligible to be a conciliator. So, good news is they have more experience, the bad news is there's fewer of them, so getting that date um, can be a challenge as well, especially if you're trying to do it very, very quickly. So, unlike our arbitrators who come from the American Arbitration Association, um, the arbitrator that we had for police last year was from New York. So, um, at least when you get to conciliation, the, the they at least have an address in Ohio. <laughs> they don't all physically live here, I don't think. So, so maybe you're getting this. So where are we? You mentioned the four groups, right? So where are we in this progression? We're, at the we're still at the beginning okay. um, negotiations. We have not declared impasse, nor is either any of the unions at this point um, on negotiations. We have a mediation scheduled for tomorrow with the AFSCME units. Um, we have dates on, on the calendar to meet with fire. Um, you know, right now there's a, there's a health insurance issue <laughs> to, um, we, we've got to get sorted out um, in, in a short time. Yeah, the timing of when your health insurance plan expires and trying to get negotiations in and crossing that, that timeline um, proves to be somewhat difficult. And how long are these contracts typically binding? Well, uh, the statute says that a contract cannot, it can, we cannot enter into a contract for more than three years. 
Okay. The standard was always three years. Um, with tough financial situations, people vented into shorter term contracts, trying to you know, Bridge do that. Cap, yeah. On the other hand, you've got um, three of your con three contracts here have a duration clause, like a termination clause that says that their, con their contracts continue in full force and effect until a new contract is reached. So even though the term is for three years, if, if there, as we're going through this negotiation fact-finding and conciliation process, that provision seems, seems mm -hmm. to imply that they stay in full force and effect and could, be, could exceed three years. Who does not have that in their contract? I can't give you a list that who does not, but it's not. You said three of the four unions. Oh, who does not? Which yeah. one? Uh, who doesn't nine, have them? 914, yeah. I think. Uh, ask me 914. Um, theirs actually does terminate with if either party files a notice to negotiate. So yeah, this is <laughs> all in picture. You know, I, I really do appreciate everything that you guys, uh, commission is doing, and um, you know, just wanted to try to answer those questions that I've heard. Sure. So you're all, so you're working with the city, presenting their side. Yes. Okay. That's, um, can I can I make a comment on that? We, like we said, like Kelly said at the very beginning, we're following the plan, and and and, and the plan is viable. I think it's a good plan. So we are following that plan, and, and as a source, you've talked about insurance before, and we are attempting everything we can to do with something about it. And as you can see, it's, it's, it's not going that well. The issue that, that, I, that I see is the city is supposed to deal with three state statutes. 4117 is collective bargaining, and following that. 118 is fiscal emergency and following that. And the other one is 124 civil service. So there are three state statutes and we're a statutory city that we are trying to follow. Now, what we're deemed as, what people think about us personally or whatever, but we are deemed by those those three aspects of it. And like I said, we are, we are trying everything we can. Now they're trying to put a plan together for next year. No plan, I believe, in my personal opinion, not the numbers guy, is viable until this issue is settled. Because these issues will determine most of your funds, and I believe it's 80-some percent of, of our expenses for salaries, which is normal. It's not, I don't think, obscene or, you know, or overwhelmed for a city. So those are the issues that we're, we're trying to follow. If this commission or this council would look at us and say, no, we want you to do that and follow the plan, that's exactly what we'll do. But we're following the recommendations of the auditors and everybody else in this in order for us to escape the, the, the grasp of the financial situation that we're in. And even though it's tough, uh, I have went through it before, if, if, if something is not correct, we will absolutely repeat the same thing again. Now, it's a short term, and like Babcock rightly said, it's a short term. So if you're looking at a three-year contract or you want to abbreviate that contract down to two years and, and let's see how the financial session plays out, that's fine. But and I've said this a hundred times, the bargaining units are there to represent their members. We are here to represent the city and the, the commission, the, the plan that the commission put together and the plan that the council put together. And so until all that's resolved, and the sooner it's resolved, the better. But I'm not so sure that I think the big, big fear is, is that for some, that if this would ever get to a court system, it has not reached a court system before. So this would be a test to see that 
a city that's in fiscal emergency has any right or control over their financial future. And so if, for example, and I may be wrong, so if an arbitrator says, okay, you've got to do this, it won't be any less, but if you go to court and, and a court for the first time says, no, you, you've got some, you've got, the city's got a right to, you know, to pursue this. And it may change things. I don't know. But it's caused irreparable mistrust and, and anger and everything else. That it magnifies when you're in three square miles and you see people on a daily basis. But we will, we will pursue, if this commission or this state says, this is what you should do, that's what we'll do. Other than that, we are following the plan. So if the state or somebody or this council turns around and says to us, Mayor, give them this, that's what we'll do. But right now, I've made the position, and if I'm wrong, because I've heard this before in this meeting, Mr. Swartz has rightfully said over a period of time, an insurance person, you know what? It's a valid point. I'm following, and we are following what you desired us to do. And if you want to change it, change it. And the, the only thing that concerns me is, here I go, uh, is November. We, people lose sight of reality sometimes, but we've got to accept what reality is, and if we cannot settle fairly in matching this plan, then I suggest that we expedite it and move into the court system as quick as we can. And that's the only way is this city's going to survive or we're going to do it again. And I think common sense would prevail uh, if, if it came down to that. I think people would finally say, okay, for a year and a half or two years, I'd be willing to do this and give the city a chance to breathe again and get a direction and yet hurt our services. That's the distance. One more thing on the police department. The police department is down. We, we use the number 45 and I think it'll come out in the plan that that's the number it's going to use. The police department is at 41. We will expedite getting the funds to test and hire those extra ones to bring them up to the 45 as quickly as we can. So that's that's sort of where we're at. Um, I, I hope I've made the, the conflict clear. I respect the, the, res the chair of the commission saying that we can't get into particulars, and, and uh, I think Mr. Babcock did a good job in not avoiding that. Avoiding that. So I think I hope it's clear, and we and if the, this commission down the road changes, they want to change direction. Just tell us, and we'll change directions. But until then, I, I'm not going to, because I don't want to come back up to this commission or council and say, okay, what'd you do? Because if I'm not mistaken, there are, there are repercussions for us not following the plan. Right. And, you know, that you can cut the budget by, you know, cut by 15% or so, like last year. So... And then I don't know what happens if an arbitrator who, for whatever reason, doesn't understand or decides to go that direction. It's, you know, when your fate's in somebody else's hands, you know, you just don't know. And, and both the, the bargaining units <coughs> and, and the city suffer the same angst over that. So I hope I've made myself clear. Uh, but if this commission ever wants to change, just tell me. Just tell us, and Joe and I, and, and uh, uh, we'll 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 move to to resolve it. But that's where it stands, and I still believe that eventually, if it's not resolved, it'll end up in the court system, maybe for the first time. So Melissa, just to clarify, me, correct me if I'm wrong. This, the city pulls together the plan. Exactly, I was going to say I mean, that as not, well. We're it's not. not directing, we right? can't. Yeah, yeah, we can't right, but say the plan. Do but this the plan that. will. The, the council will bring you the next plan. Sure. Based and if you adopt that plan, we'll stick. We'll, sure, we'll sure, follow sure. that plan. Okay. 
and it's the you know it, you were the final sayer on, on yeah. the plan before, and so that's why we're following that plan. And the comments that have been made, rightfully so, about the insurance, is it, it didn't fall on deaf ears, and you're certainly not the only ones to say that. So you know it's that's that's where we stand. I, I have a question for you. Um, when when the two parties or the multiple parties are negotiating, clearly we're coming from a, a point of this is this is where we have to be to make it work. So I would assume, maybe I'm just kind of talking out loud, that the the other side you're negotiating with understands that status quo can't continue because it won't fit in the plan and will never get out of the plan if concessions aren't made to some extent because it you know if you're gonna you know if you have a hundred dollars and you're gonna spend 110 you're never gonna have you're never gonna have a positive amount of money and you're never gonna get out of that situation uh, is that is that tone being expressed to I guess the other party and ultimately to a, a um, an arbitrator or the courts I mean it's you know I guess you can and so you can say you need this and say you need that, but if it's just not going to be feasible and the math doesn't add up, then it just doesn't add up. Is that the tone the city is uh, as the uh, stressing? Said, and as I said, our, our position in negotiations and in the hearings that we had last year um, have been follow the plan. And if the plan doesn't provide for a certain level, then you know, our, we, we've argued that we have to follow the plan. Um, we did have a conciliator last year that agreed to some degree with that, we had an arbitrator that didn't. So again, it's these neutrals, um, we can make the arguments, and that, as well as the other part, the unions have the right to make their arguments, and it's uh, you know, what the neutral decides. But, even, even if, I mean, like the, the case of the person from New York, the arbitrator, it says, well, I'm going to do this because this is what I believe in. It goes in the face of what Ohio is trying to do as far as getting out of fiscal emergency, and that person just overrides it, and you're kind of back where you started? It's, I, I think it's back to what the mayor said. There's a um, kind of a gap between 4117 and 118. And uh, you know, well, 4117 gives the authority to um, a fact finder, conciliator, or arbitrator. Um, so, sorry. Okay. We're not obviously the first city to be in fiscal emergency, and I can't imagine this is the first time this has happened, right? So how does it play out in other cases? I uh, never made it to okay. court. Sure. Um, there's one case that made it to court, City of Mansfield, uh, but in, in general, the well, where it has happened before, the conflict, it has not been resolved by um, a higher authority as, as far as a court to say which of these statutes controls or has precedence over the other, to my knowledge. Did we cover the information you had wanted to share? I think we covered that. Okay. Thank you. One more, one more question. Okay. Um, does the state of Ohio I guess the, the people that you guys work for, um, do they have representation that would speak to uh, a mediator or, or an arbitrator uh, to, to stress that, well, we have this plan here and you can't make this decision if it's just going to go right in the face of this. Is there, is there a debate that goes so on? I, I will handle that one. So April and myself have actually been brought into fact-finding arbitration and conciliation last year during 2018 to talk about the financial recovery plan and what was in there and about chapter 118 as well. So our presence has been requested to be there and we came and, and, and um, I guess, I don't know what you call us, but we came and talked to them. They were witnesses. Witnesses, thank you. They were actual witnesses. Yeah, because it would be a shame for that not to occur. Uh, and that for you to have to be prompted by them to to do that because obviously that's very relevant and um, with multiple parties involved it, it would it would make no common sense to not 
have that discussion. So, so that's all I have to say. Can I add one? Here's part of our issue is that in defense of the bargaining units, we're going in and we're telling the bargaining units based on this fiscal emergency and the numbers that have been provided that we're in a fiscal emergency, we need to do this. On the other hand, in different arenas, there is discussions, well, we're going to do this and we're going to spend on this and we're going to do that and we're going to spend on that. You know, if I'm in bargaining units, I'm thinking, where's that money coming from? And so pontificating what, what the city's going to do is no help. Because sometimes people in a public forum make statements that they want to spend money on this and when they want to spend money on that for whatever reason. That complicates the issue. That just makes it worse. So what I'm sharing with you is the dilemma as the administration that we face in these bargaining units uh, for a lot of reasons because if, if I'm a member of the bargaining unit, well, how are you going to do this? Well, how are you going to do that? It may be a wish list, but to the bargaining units, you're talking about, well, you're not going to give us anything and you expect us to pay that. And yet we have people pontificating on the fact that we want to take this money and we're going to do that. And we have plenty of money, we're going to do that. It just sets it back. So I, what I'm trying to do is give you an overview of our world, what, what we're dealing with, and, and what the facts are as I see them. Doesn't make them accurate, but those are the facts as I see them. It's, it's magnified when you have three square miles, if, if I'm making myself clear. So there's finger pointing to be made to me, to everybody else. There's, you know, it's, it's just generally not going well and so it didn't go well before so if everybody we hold our ground for a certain amount of time and get us out of here we'll be all right but if we don't i don't know what happens all right kelly thank you very thank much you. for taking the time to do that Did the commission accept questions from the audience we don't have that on our agenda. I'm, I would be happy to talk afterwards if you have a question. Um, next item is the report of the mayor. I don't know if you have anything else you want to share, just in our regular. You just heard it. Okay. That's <laughs> I mean, we've been spending our time. This is a, a lot of our time is devoted to this. We are we are looking at doing a lot of things, changing things, and economic development and all that. We're we're looking at making changes or attempting to make changes that have never been made in the city before we continue to have discussions with businesses to come in and uh, uh, e exploring the possibility of some uh, some ways not only to reduce our cost but to bring in additional so these are all options that we're looking into and I and, I, and I'm not prepared at this time to if I say something not purely to prepared to defend it, you know, like it should be. So I will keep you posted. Okay. Thank you. Sure. City Council report? Um, obviously, most of our time is being spent on developing the financial recovery plan. Um, there's also been um, a lot of effort being put into a capital improvement plan. Um, we had, uh, we've had a couple of Committee of the Whole meetings where that's been discussed. I pointed out, as the mayor said at the last one, this lovely to plan all of these capital improvements, but it's certainly a fluid document and dependent upon the funds being available to do all that stuff. So um, it's a plan. It is what it is. At least we're taking a look at um, all, a lot of our assets and for the first time in a long time, I guess, um, looking at the age of computers and age of equipment and age of cars and coming up with a plan of replacement of those things on a regular basis. So that's taken up the majority of our time. Um, per, uh, we Just to give you an update on the retirees health insurance, um, that old policy expired December 31st. To my knowledge, we were not hit with anything over $10,000. I know there was a discussion about whether we should continue that stopgap insurance for um, catastrophic 
illnesses and to my knowledge there hasn't been anything that has been submitted to the city um, so we switched from Benovation which stopped doing third-party administration into SNS healthcare um, they have um, we have gotten the first bills from them and so they're starting to pay the retirees from those 2018 claims um, we sent out letters to all of the current all the past members of the um, retirees health care and asked them to fill out an application we've gotten a great majority of those back and in fact the administrative committee is meeting here this afternoon to review those applications for 2019 um, so we are starting to rock and roll um, you know I think the plan will be set up and in discussions with retirees they're quite happy that they don't have to submit bills anymore this year it'll be a much um, easier process for them and um, now I'm I'm kind of personally taking it on to make sure that each of the retirees get what was coming to them from 2017 and 18 it's taken a while to get all of that information transferred from Benovation into SNS but they're, they're like I said they're finally starting to process claims and we're beginning to pay them I think we you just approved about a sixty thousand dollars in payments at last week and we just got another um, couple of bills um, yesterday um, the mayor secretary gets those and so we're they're starting to pay out those claims so hopefully well by the end of this year those claims have to be submitted by the end of 2019 and then um, from then on from 2019 on it's just the um, the subsidy, the $3,500 subsidy for each person who um, meets the criteria established by the new plan. So we'll have a fixed amount. We'll know exactly what those costs are instead of, you know, waiting to get some unknown bill from folks. So, Good job. Okay. Um, we need to look at our calendars for meeting next time. And um, the thought is that we will have um, before us a plan a revised plan to consider and wondering if Tuesday April 2nd would work for people same time 1130 I have something else but I can cancel it okay uh, the thought is the plan will be ready and we can get it to you via email prior to that meeting that's the thought. <laughs> okay. That would work for me. Great. Okay. Let's go with that. That's April 2nd at 1130 then. <coughs> Tuesday, April 2. Okay. Got a little bit over an hour. Appreciate everybody being here. Is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? Mayor? I'll second the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Adjourn. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>